Hello friends, welcome to PySpark video tutorials. In this video, I'm going to give you few important interview questions. Um, you can expect few interview questions on advanced uh, topics. And the previous video I have covered on bad records. So how we will avoid bad records, how we will track bad records using while reading data from CSV or JSON file. So using these three modes. And this video, I'm going to give you a few more interview questions related to same PySpark and data frame options. Let's look at one by one. So if you have a requirement to identify list of available or created data frames in PySpark session. So how we will identify that? How we will identify that? So I'm going to create one data frame. Just I'm creating one data frame. So this data frame is created now. I want to identify how many data frames are available in this session okay so for that PySpark is helping and one of the function it is available that is called data frame PySpark.sql you can identify that function I'm going to create another data frame so globals so globals is one of the Python predefined inbuilt function so which it will give you available list of all objects Objects means methods, variables, functions, data frames, everything it will give you. When, whenever you use a globals, it will give you in a key value paid data set. So key value paid data set, if you use this, key value paid data set. So key, sorry, globals. So key value paid data set means which key and value like Spark context, SQL context, table, SQL, user defined functions. These all are inbuilt functions, all variables, methods, everything you can see here. Okay. Everything you can see, whatever is created, whatever we use, everything you can see. So in this list, first we will convert into items. So items means where you can get key and value separate. So dictionary, so key and values. So from here, the value, so value, if it is data frame, just we are filtering that. If using another function is instance, we will verify that if that global C is returning some output, in that output, data frame is available or not. If data frame is available, then return that, okay? So in this, here you can see few data frames are available. One of the data frame just now we created this data frame and there is another data frame and corrupt df and there are a few other existing so these all are created at dynamically these all are created dynamically and few are just now i created so those data frame you can see in a python list in a python list so just i will clear the state and result I'm going to remove the, this current session state. Now I will run it again. Now I will run it again. Now you can see only one data frame is available. So only one data frame means previous session will have some other data frame which I have created. Now only this data frame which I created that you can find. If I create any another data frame that also you should get. I'm going to create this data frame and run this again. Two data frames are available. Two data frames are available. So first globals. So globals will give you all items. So all items key value paid data set. Then that we will verify if it is a data frame, then get that. That is using if condition is instance another function which is for validation purpose data type so data type which is a data frame then take that so this way we can get that this way we can get that then if you have a requirement to add file name file name with a location into a data frame for example you are reading data from csv file if you are reading data from json file I want to know how many files are I'm reading and those file names with the location I want to add in one of the column in data frame. So how to add that? So PySpark is providing one function called input file name. 
using this input file name you can add one new column using with column using with column so that input file name will get added and whenever you are reading a file so whenever you are reading file so in this location I have few csv files i'm reading all csv files there you can find the column new column called file name and the three files okay so just i've given a limit if i go with the 10 records so using input file name function we can get a file name with location in the data frame so this is possible and this is this will help you when whenever you want to track this into particular table list of table list of files which you are reading then you can track using this function is possible so here you can find this okay and when it comes to another requirement okay so i want to identify number of records on each file for example i'm trying to read 10 files or 50 files or 100 files i want to identify the number of records total count at each file count at each file so same option just create one column using this input file function then group by an file name so group by an file name is for each file how many records we are reading so that count you will get there are four files actually i duplicated the same file to give you the example more than one file so each file is having same number of records you can find that so this way we can achieve get the number of records on each file if you are processing 100 files if you want to know how many records on each file then you can use this one you can use same input file and group by on file name you will get a number of records then there is another requirement if you want to know the partition id so as of now we saw the file name but sometimes your file is a bigger file maybe 10 gb or 5 gb or maybe 100 gb what will happen based on partition size default partition max partition size 128 mb based on that the partitions will be created okay so i want to know how many partitions are there then partition id i want to know how many partitions and partition id so PySpark is providing one function called spark partition id using this function you can add another column called the partition id and if you are looking for number of partitions just go with the distinct and particular column id particular column id and on the same way you can take the partition wise count okay there are four partitions created there are four partitions it's created obviously every time whenever it is creating partitions it starts with a zero index okay that if you want to know the count of each partition then you can go with a group by there's another question you can expect i want to know partition wise number of records partition wise number of records so you can add a new column using a partition id then group by you will get a number of records on each partition then this is common scenario if you want to add surrogate key in your big data so normally in traditional data warehousing what we will do we will consider sequence number sequence number which, which is integers sequentially it is generated but when it comes to big data what we will do we will use hash key so there are different hash functions are available to generate surrogate key so spark also is providing one function called mono tonically increasing id function using this function you can generate a surrogate key based on your data based on your data means if you have a records it will give you sequence id okay it will give you sequence id this is one method but this the so problem with this sequence gen generated id is for example so if it is a dimension table by mistake someone is deleted the table you want to reprocess from source and what will happen the sequence generator ild whenever you are generating based on data it will change the id okay so if you are reprocessing again and again you will get a different id so when you are processing dimension tables the dimension is depending on some other fact tables 
you need to update all the relevant facts wherever you are using particular dimension. To avoid these issues, we can go with hash key. Hash key is one of the function called MD5 SHA2. MD5, there are some scenarios you will get a duplicates. You will get a duplicates. So to avoid that, we can go with SHA2. So MD5, where based on your number, so based on your particular primary key in the table, or maybe a combination of multiple columns, which you can generate. So you will get a unique ID. So the same data, if you are processing again and again, you will get a same sequence ID, same surrogate key. You won't face any issues. So we can use MD5. So here I'm using MD5 based on employee number. So based on employee number means if employee number is that particular number, you can get the same ID, same ID. That is called hash key. This one, A1F, here you can see. Okay, so if you try to reprocess 100 times, you will get the same surrogate key. And sometimes depending on data size, sometimes if you have a huge data in transaction table, there are chances maybe every uh, 100k records or every 1 million or maybe every 2 million, there are some chances it may generate duplicate record. To avoid that still, there is another function called SHA2 with the 256 bytes which we can go with this and it is also same hash key. So it can generate always based on your primary key column. So based on your primary key column or a combination of multiple columns, you can generate that. So this will be unique always. Okay. So if you are trying to reprocess again and again, you will get the same surrogate key. So this way we can achieve that. So row numbers also we will we can use but it is not suggestible okay then so there is another interview question you can expect what is a temporary view global temporary view temporary view and global temporary view both are session scoped both are session scoped and one is server level another one is user session level so server level means for example if i i'm creating this two views you can see this global temporary view temporary review okay now i can query this both okay both i can access so when you are accessing this global temporary view you have to access with the schema name called global underscore temp this is the one difference okay global temp dot view name so global temporary views will be registered under one schema called global underscore temp then just clear the state of this clear the state so just i clear the state if i try to if i if i want to access this view if i want to access this view so that view is not available that view you can see table or view not found let's try to access global temporary view See, I'm able to access this. I'm able to access this. So, global temporary view can be shared at server level. So, server level, Spark session level can be shared. And when it comes to normal temporary view, user specific. So, user specific means which is a particular user session will be there. So, that session, whenever you clear that, so that will be cleared. Now, you can observe this. So, this view will be available when the spark session is available if you stop the spark session then this won't be available let's so just i'm stopping spark session it's restarting so automatically it will get restarted wait for some time and we'll verify the session spark session is established or not so it will take some time it's trying to restart just i stop this spark session earlier i just cleared the state of current session which is user scope okay then current user session scope then server level so spark entire spark session the same spark session can be used by other users as well 
So global temporary view primary requirement is that can be used in other jobs in the particular spark session level. Okay. So users scope then spark session scope level. So we can go with based on your requirement. One is temporary view. Another one is global temporary view. I will try to access this view now. And it is trying to fetch, but it is not available. It is trying to fetch. It is not available. Why? Because I stopped the spark session. Then I restarted the spark session. Now it is not able to get that because it is not available. So global temporary view is at spark session level. Temporary views are user session level, user session level. So based on your requirement, you can use this. Okay. Then Spark catalog objects. So the Spark catalog will have a information where databases, tables and columns information will be available. If you want to fetch, it's like a, any databases will have a views, metadata views like this. Here also we can utilize this. You can get the databases, tables and views. For example, if I'm looking for databases, just list databases will give you all the databases, available databases. There are few databases which is available here and that you can, if you use a display, you will get more clarity on that. So display in the table format, HTML table format, you can get that and the columns and data. So database name and the location, you can see there are many databases are available. Okay. So that's about list databases. And if you're looking for tables, so tables means we need to pass input argument database name so particular database how many tables are available you will get this in this database having many tables around seven eight tables are available those information you will get only table information then next column so when you are looking for a column we need to give it two parameters database name table name database name table name so then you will get all the column information all column information so these are our where you can see the table information table name database name and complete description about that table type is temporary or not same thing another table okay same thing another table so if you're looking for columns so particular table particular database so you you will get a column information you can see so customer table i'm retrieving and there is a database name this one so if you comment this so just only customer table columns so that table is available in, in this database so you will get a complete column information customer key description data type nullable not nullable partition is bucketed next another column like this complete column information you will get that so this way we can use spark catalog so metadata everything will be stored there and we can retrieve that metadata and if you want to create a DDL we can create a DDL as well and there are a few more interview questions have prepared so that we will discuss in another video so thank you for watching my videos please subscribe my channel thank you very much